Moving right along with the population kind of the topics, uh, our next question is about a population growth curve. And you don't need to actually know anything about biology, you just need to be critical about this graph to know what the answer is. So at which time in the population growth curve does the population size begin to decline? And you need to know that the x-axis is time, and you need to know that the number of organisms, very important, is on the y-axis. And if you have a look over here, if you have a look, as uh, for uh, one, we have an exponential increase, for two, we have an exponential tapering off, and for three, we have a flattening of the graph. But does the number ever actually decrease? No. It never actually decreases. So the answer for this case is D. The graph does not show a time when population size decreases. Okay? So and all the other ones are incorrect, just because of that a reason. So let's look at the second question. What can limit increases in population size? Once again, this is fairly straightforward as well. You can usually judge this by um, common sense. So a decrease in prey. Um, a decrease in prey would, yes, would indeed limit. It would indeed limit the increase in population size because if you had less prey, then um, you wouldn't have enough food for your you know, baby, for example. So yes, yeah, so one is indeed correct. So if we have a look at this, then we can get rid of C because there's no one in there. A decrease in parasites. So a decrease in parasites would usually not uh, that would encourage an increase in population size. It wouldn't limit it because parasites, think of them almost like predators. They kind of like nibble on you and then they kind of make you feel a bit ill and um, you're not feeling too healthy. So it's not this one. So anything that has a two, we can get rid of. So D and A. So we know that the answer is B. And three, an increase in predators, that does make sense as well because the more, say, dinosaurs there were in um, an environment, then, you know, the less... Your, your children are going to get eaten, so your population size is going to be limited as well. So, this question. In a population of rabbits studied over a period of six months, it was found that natality was greater than mortality and emigration was greater than immigration. What can be concluded about the final population of rabbits? Key definitions you should know. Natality. Mortality. Emigration. Immigration. So think of natality, very simple. Birds. So baby rabbits coming into the population. Mortality, opposite, death. Um, emigration is rabbits moving out. Immigration, rabbits moving in. Okay, so what can be concluded about the final population of rabbits? First of all, we know that natality is greater than mortality. So births were greater than deaths. So therefore, we have a net positive, don't we? From the births and deaths. How about emigration? Emigration was greater than immigration. So we, that actually means that uh, we have a net negative because we have more of the rabbits moving out. So we have a positive and a negative, and, but we don't know how big the positive is and we don't know how big the negative is. So... Because of that, you have to be very critical about this question. The answer is D. There is not enough information to make a valid conclusion. Because some people might be tempted to say C, or it will be exactly the same because we have a positive and a negative. But the thing is that we don't know the precise number that emigrated, immigrated, died, and were born. So it's important to know, to be critical, and to answer D. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out, just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions, as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.